Welcome to On the Road with David Vieira. I'm Barbara Canelopoulos and I'm here with David Vieira, but we're not on the road, we're on stage at the Katuit Center for the Arts. How did this, all this happen? Well, you know, Barbara, the uh, Katuit Center for the Arts is really a hidden gem here uh, in Katuit, uh, but a resource for uh, the art community and the broader community all across Cape Cod. So I wanted us to have an opportunity to learn about some of the programs that they have here. Uh, some of the plans they have for the future and really let our viewers know uh, how much uh, of a gem this location yes, is. It, tru it truly is, it, yes. And we're here with, uh, with David. David, David Keene, I'm the Executive Director of Katuit Center for the Arts and uh, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for having us. Right, yes. I know we're here on a busy day. There's 50 <laughs> school children from my district, uh, my yeah. daughter's school actually, Mullen Hall. We can hear them in the background. They're, they're touring the uh, exhibit here, which actually I understand is hung. Ye yes, and, and uh, that one of the great uh, things about this place is it's always like this. <laughs> there are people crawling everywhere all the time. It's really wonderful. But one of the most special things we do every year is an art exhibit that has a theme. Uh, this year's theme is Heroes and Villains. And all of the work in our exhibition spaces is hung one foot lower than would normally be hung in a traditional museum. And that's because these shows are designed for the children. And we, this year, will bring almost 900 kids from the Cape through the exhibit in small groups. Uh, what we're hearing now, they're getting a docent tour by a professional. So they actually look and discuss the artwork and the themes. And then uh, they go into our art studio and do an art project. In this case, they create their own superhero shield with oh. a, like a that's circular piece of cardboard. And, and so they have something to take away. Oh, and um, I often go back to one of the first years I was here when we did this. There was a, a girl who had gone through the exhibit who lived in Wellfleet. And she was so moved by it, she insisted that her parents drive here after they got home from work so she could show her brother. And it was 5 o'clock, we were closed. And I happened to be here, and I, I noticed the car. And so they said, well, oh, that's too bad. Well, we'll come back, but you know, we drove here from Wellfleet. And I said, C come on in, and, and turned on all the lights. And I watched this little girl give her brother the tour, talking about each piece of art. And at that moment, I was like, if we reach one child in that way, then and we've that done depth, our job. Yes. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's really a, a wonderful, this shows a wonderful thing. Because you never know how young people are exposed to and, and become lover of all of the art forms. You just don't know whether that happens in your uh, elementary school with an art teacher or a music teacher or through something like what we're doing. So we're really proud of it. Yes, and exposure is key to, to all of that. Now, uh, there may be viewers who think of the Katuit Center of the Arts as a place where plays are mm -hmm. performed. And so, but this is vastly more than just uh, theater arts. Uh, tell us how long this has been going on. Well, the uh, Katuit Center for the Arts was um, created in 1993 and incorporated as a 501c3 nonprofit in 1995 in a small building in the village of Katuit. Um, that in 2000, I believe that building burned to the ground and then um, over the course of time, this uh, theater was built and we actually had three buildings on the campus that were in use. Um, over, the, over the course of the years, we've expanded uh, to the degree that we can. We actually have two theater uh, rooms. We have a small black box in the building that sits on Route 28 and the driveway that seats about 44, 45 people and then this large theater of about 180 um, is a capacity and you're right that's what most people think that that's what we are but in addition we have over 200 classes a year that we offer in visual and performing arts and we also have the three gallery spaces that we spoke about our galleries are free and open to the public to come anytime we have a large series of concerts that we produce we also occasionally have a superstar on the stage, we've had Judy Collins here, Art Garfunkel has been on this stage, Audrey McDonald has performed on this stage, um, Cheetah Rivera has performed on this stage, 
And in addition to that, we do work as an outreach organization that a lot of people don't know about. So for example, we created and run an art program for the incarcerated youth in uh, Brewster, which uh, for a lot of reasons we can't you know, publicize that to the way we would like to, but that's a really meaningful way to get out into the community. We also collaborate with a lot of organizations. We're doing our third collaboration with the Cape Symphony, um, actually our fourth collaboration with the Cape Symphony in February of 2021. Um, you'll have to wait for the announcement, but it's very exciting. Um, and we also have a really great partnership. I know you'll be speaking later with some of the, uh, the people who are connected with our Cape Cod Can program, which is a program that was created to offer um, artistic um, uh, uh, possibilities for adults with special needs. David, it's interesting that you <clears throat> mentioned that we are going to uh, talk to some folks that are in Cape Cod Can. And as a patron of the Katuit Center for the Arts, I was sitting uh, in the crowd for the, one of the musical reviews that mm -hmm. um, brings tears to our eyes every mm -hmm. year. I and mean, for, for the viewers that have never been to this uh, performance, uh, you've got to come down and see it and, and to see the pride and the excitement, yeah. not only here on the stage, but what's really neat is uh, as each of the groups are getting ready to come down and perform, they're all up in the balcony and they're supporting each other and um, uh, uh, congratulating the group that came off the stage and pumping up the group that's getting ready to come down on the stage and all. And so one year, uh, Richard Hurley, who's the founder uh, of Cape Cod Can, he got up on the stage and said, we, we need members on the advisory board for yeah. our program. And so during the break, I went up and said, Richard, I'd love to help out if I could. I gave him my card, and that's how I got on the board of the uh, Cape Cod Collaborative Arts Center. Yeah, you, there are no words to describe the experience of that show and one of the special things i know they'll talk about it i don't want to take the thunder but but there are multiple organizations from the cape that come together to do this and they're they're on a professional stage where they're rock stars for the and and it, it's just remarkable it's really really wonderful and, and along with the stage there's also the art program right in falmouth we host a a portion of one of the murals that they did uh, in the Falmouth Chamber of Commerce building, mm -hmm. uh, where our uh, conference room is upstairs. That was one of the Collaborative Art Network projects a few years ago. It seems to me, too, that, that this emphasizes what art has always been. It has always been for everyone, mm -hmm. uh, even going back to its origins with cave paintings. And so the idea that um, this is not just theater for a specified audience, it's for everyone, is just inspiring. Yeah, and we, um, we believe that art and culture are as important to the health of a community as the air we breathe and the exactly. food we drink. It, it's, not, it, it's an essential part of, of the human experience. And, and the, um, the growth that we've had over the, the past you know, 10, 15 years is just remarkable. And I think because people feel a real connection to the place, there's a welcoming vibe here. Um, it, it, some people have said it, it, that it, it saved their lives. Uh, to come here. It's a, a very important part of community on Cape Cod. Yeah, the Katuit Center for the Arts to me isn't a theater, it isn't a gallery, it's a community. Yeah. And it's a community of not just artists, but it's a community of, of Cape Cod, of, right. of our residents, our visitors that come here um, and, and access one of the many uh, opportunities, whether it's viewing uh, or, or learning and participating and creating. So yeah. that's the exciting part. Um, I know you've got some expansion plans in mind. Right? We, we do. We, we have a lot of expansion <laughs> plans in mind. And uh, we're actually happy that, to say that we've, we've completed uh, two phases in a very um, ambitious uh, capital expansion program. Um, it, the, the, whole, uh, the whole project is a $38 million reimagination of the campus. And um, I often say, people say, well, why? You know, why are you doing this? We, we are completely out of space. We teach classes in a room that doesn't have a bathroom. Uh, we don't have enough uh, facility to um, invite all the local musicians that we would like to have playing here. We literally are, have completely outgrown our ability to serve our constituency. And uh, so with the acquisition uh, recently of the old gas station next door, which we never thought would be a possibility, uh, it, that, that kind of just opened up our entire um, planning because we now have a seven and a half acre uh, campus. 
that we can expand on. So the first thing we did was convert the gas station into a state-of-the-art ceramic studio. We're actually going to get a chance to see that. You're going to, yeah. Segment, yeah. And it, it, it's just spectacular. And we kept a nod to the, the architecture of the gas station. You know, we're really careful in, in how we designed all of that. Um, so that piece is finished. And in the big plan, um, ultimately, we want to have a 400-seat theater in addition to this one. So that this we can use, uh, like I said, for more local musicians, we can have a place where there's a dance floor, a dance area. It, we believe that 400 seats is the sweet spot where if we're running a production of something like Mamma Mia or Chicago in the summer, we could, we could sell that out in that number. And then also we can continue bringing uh, celebrities to the stage and not have to charge $250 a, a seat. So, you know, more of the local public can participate in that. Yes, that's so critical to keep it affordable. Yes, yeah. So, so and that's a, a big part of the plan. Uh, the approach we're taking is one to do things in phases so that, that in the whole big plan, there are multiple phases within phases. So for phase three that we'll embark on next, it basically will be divided into three subsections. So um, we need to put an addition onto this building that has a rehearsal space, a green room, a dressing room. None of those things exist in this, in this building. So we will raise, if, if that's a $2 million uh, chunk, then when we raise the next $2 million, we'll build that addition and then continue raising money and do the next phase so that, so that each thing we do um, is self-sustaining. It has value to the organization and we try to approach it where we do them in order of not only what we need but what generates revenue back into the organization uh, so that at the end of the day our dependence on the private sector and philanthropy is a much smaller percentage of what it takes us to operate now. And, and, and that excitement of, of seeing the phases as well yeah. builds excitement for the next yeah. phase. Yeah. Well, and so I, I, mean, I think that the, the, the pottery studio open now is our best marketing tool because you know it just opened. You know, uh, it looks list, beautiful. Don't you over there? Yeah, yeah. We, the, the, there were, I, I, took, I started my class on Wednesday night. Um, I was the worst student of the 11 <laughs> in, the, in the class, but it was so much fun. And uh, we have over 150 people signed up for classes just in January and February just in ceramics. Oh. Now, if, if uh, viewers want to take a class, um, is there a, a program? Uh, are you online? Yes. With a website? Our website is katuitcenterforthearts.org. Wait, yes. Yes, that's yes. correct. Uh, and all of our classes are on the oh. website. And people can then go there and sign up? Yes. For Classes are in session now. Is there another um, a beginning new classes coming up? They rotate, and there are some drop-in classes. Uh, so it, in, in general, we do six or eight weeks, and then um, uh, you know, throughout the year. But there are weekend workshops. There are, uh, there's a really popular stained glass class uh, that um, that runs on a workshop basis and a regular basis. I hear that's happening in the schoolhouse right that's now. That's in the schoolhouse which right is now. Where Cape Cod Can headquarters. Are. And when I I think the second year I was here, which I'll, it will be ten years next month, um, I took a beginner ukulele class. That class has filled every single time that's, it's run. That's the one for, I've been trying to take, so I can play <laughs> it up at my camp in New Hampshire. Yeah, and and it's it's just awesome. Ukulele, you're giving me ideas. Yeah. Wow. I think that would <laughs> we'll be We'll have to such, take the class together. <laughs> such fun. I'd love to do that. And at, in December every year, we have a, an, an annual ukulele festival. The festival, So yes. if you bring your ukulele, you get in free, and then they have all different ukulele groups from the Cape and a few off, and it culminates with a giant ukulong. Uh, where you know everybody gets up on the stage and, and does oh. a, a number or something. Yeah. That's, I'm in. Okay. That's wonderful. <laughs> right. Right. So Barbara, I think if we have an opportunity, Dave, could you give us a little uh, tour, walk through some of the galleries sure. place and kind of take a, a, a view of the resources that yes, are here yes. and the current exhibit as yes, well? Yes, I'd love Absolutely. to see some of the what you have here. Absolutely. Great. Let's go. Bye-bye.
So here we are on the balcony part of the gallery, and you mentioned something earlier about the diversity of the art here. Yes, yes from, from uh, abstract to representational, it's everything. It seems to me that you have represented every kind of art there is. It's extraordinary. Yeah, and the, the, the special thing about this exhibition, uh, again, it, the theme is heroes and villains. So it would be very easy to do an, an exhibit that was all like comic book oriented. And so what you have here is a collection of work by mostly local artists mm -hmm. that really make the children think about what does that mean? I mean, what does this pottery have to do, you know, with heroes and villains? And when you look very closely in it, there's a Greta Thunberg uh, reference w within the, the pottery here. And each artist has their own interpretation or point of view about what that means. So that's really great for us I when see. we bring the kids in. And you know, it's meaningful for the adults too, that the hero and the villain isn't necessarily obvious. Mm -hmm. And case in point, Ch challenging the preconceived notion. It, it is. And um, as we head over here, like two things I wanted to point out, but the cloud that you see is actually motion activated. So when you walk by, and so Michelle Law, who is our gallery manager, uh, she, her husband uh, created the motion sensors and the lights and they talked to the kids about the, the clouds. Can, they can be heroes by providing shade on a sunny day. They can be villains by providing shade on a sunny day. <laughs> they, uh, and like the, the, all of the ways lightning, that, and lightning, <laughs> yeah. So it's got lightning in the, in the thing. So it's a, it's a really exciting uh, exhibit. And if, if I may, um, one of the jurors in the exhibit, Mary Moquin, she's a local artist, uh, she didn't even uh, necessarily expect to create this work because we had one work by the jurors. So she did a portrait of Jamie Wolfe, who's the founder of Katuit Center for the Arts. So he was the original founder and artistic director. And the canvas, they share a studio now, an art oh. studio. So the canvas background is actually Jamie's painting and then Mary did the portrait on top of that. So there are lots of uh, connections here. So not only children, but any viewer comes and not only is exposed to art, but is, has a spur to the imagination, is, comes to think so that there are concepts involved. Uh, this is really wonderful. It's a sort of a teaching as well as uh, of exposing people and, to great art. And we rotate the exhibits about every five weeks. Mm -hmm. And we have a committee that work to uh, choose the work and the artists and the groups of artists that go on the walls. We have sort of a tongue in cheek um, expression within the committee who work on the art exhibitions, which is no sunsets or sailboats ever. <laughs> and uh, that's not entirely true because, you know, we, we do have some of that. But, but you know, you, we really want to, to your point, be able to stretch the imagination and the right. conversation. That's right. To go beyond the cliché, the Cape Cod cliché. Right. 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 That, that is just very exciting. And, and for, for viewers that might um, be sort of at-home artists, mm -hmm. um, they can participate in, in some of these shows as well by submitting applications to... We have two or three open jury shows every year. The information is on our website. And what, what that means is that anyone can submit work for consideration to, uh, to be in a show. And uh, we encourage works of all sizes, all types, um, any interpretation of a theme. And then the final exhibit each year is our member student teacher um, exhibition. So if you're a member of Katuit Center for the Arts, you may uh, present one work and it will be hung in the final member show. And I guess we're getting ready for a show in a few weeks, a turnover? Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. as well. mm -hmm. yeah. And we should emphasize that these are all Cape Cod artists. These are all Cape Cod artists, yes. yes. This is a venue for anyone on Cape Cod who wants to paint or draw. Exactly. Or this is really and I think we're about to be am ambushed by uh, rambunctious One group of, school, of uh, groups. Uh, school groups, which, um, and I have to tell you that there, there's nothing more fulfilling than watching groups of children um, on the campus, no matter what they're doing. Um, in terms of the theater, we try to present one 
large theatrical uh, uh, play or musical every year designed for children and families both to be in the play and as the audience. And for, for many of them, it's the first time taking one of these school trips that they've ever been inside of an mm -hmm. art gallery and, yeah. and getting an early appreciation for that. And the great story that you told about yeah. the, the child from Wellfleet who yeah. said, told the family, come on, let's go down. And yeah. you know, that's great. That's great. Well, David, thank so, you so much well, for, you're welcome. for bringing us here today. I think we're going to head over to the, um, to the Clay Studio yes. uh, and meet uh, Melissa Kenny and some folks from the Cape Cod. Excellent. Cape they'll, have a, they'll have a, a lot of uh, great information to share, I'm sure. And take a pottery class. Yes, yes. After the ukulele. After, yeah. after <laughs> ukulele. <laughs> and thanks again. Okay. Dave. Thank you. Audience. Thank Bye. you. Yes. Thank, mm. thank you. So Barbara, now we're at the Clay Studio, the old converted gas station here at the Katuit Center for the Arts, um, and we've got some uh, guests that are part of the Cape Cod CAN program that we talked about earlier. Yes, yes. Nikki has been learning a lot about performing, and she's going to tell us something about your experiences. What, the, what stands out for you as uh, the most fun? Uh, the scripted readings with Jess and Garrett, and the... Uh, plays on the main stage. I was in the class. A little bit of something about, I think we told you earlier, about doing some improv. And I took improv yeah. with Jess and Garrett. Yeah, yeah. Not easy, but fun. No, but it's so much fun. Good, good, right. Mm -hmm. There has been quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of exposure. And what the stage readings that you mentioned, has that been uh, uh, interesting? Yes, it has. Yeah, right, good. And you're continuing to do some more of that? Yes. Excellent, excellent. This is uh, quite a rich program for everyone. Yeah, and Nikki's been involved with multiple types, types of activities, right? Yes. And, and you have a, a community-based showing coming up, I heard? Yes. Where is it? What's that all about? It's at the Centerville Library. Um, I'm painting um, small, uh, small paintings, large paintings, and... <laughs> I'm selling my jewelry and... What kind of paintings? Do you have a particular uh, theme that you paint? Beach. Okay. Uh, Cape Cod uh, yeah, theme? Right. Cape Cod theme. Right. And you sell some of your jewelry online? Uh, yes. Excellent. That's and good. my cards. Very good. Very good. Are yeah, your cards yes. made from paintings of yours? Too? Yes. Did you watercolor or acrylic or oil? Watercolor and uh, acrylic. What's your favorite one? Acrylic. The acrylic. It's easy to clean up too. <laughs> yes, and it doesn't stink like oil. Right, right. yes, yes, right. It is um, quite, a pro quite a program. And have you been, uh, how long have you been involved with Cape Cod? I've been involved for about a year, two years. And would you recommend other people to sign up? Yes, I would totally recommend everyone else to sign up. What, what brought you to do art? What, what inspired you to do art? Um, my teachers, my family, my friends, um, nature. Um, Most of your paintings are of natural scenes? You mentioned beaches. Yes, they are. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show today and sharing some of your experiences with the program and we'll make sure that we put your website address up on our uh, thank our you show so folks yes, can view yes, definitely. when your show's coming up in Centerville and any other shows that you have thank you so much yes thank you yes Ben now tell us something about your activities here well, I do like um, a lot of these uh, activities, which are um, this uh, organization, disability partnership group called Esprit. Mm -hmm. I do like a lot of fun activities with all the uh, friends that I'm with. And we also do, um, we do like 
rehearsals for performance shows that we do usually every other Sunday. Oh, I see. And so you actually put on performances too. Well, yeah. But, um, I usually ha well, I, uh, I usually help out, I see. and um, I also I also do sing and and play guitar and and do a few uh, acting skits. Very good. Very good. Uh, what, what's the most fun for you of all those things? Usually the um, usually the singing and playing guitar that I'm really good at. I see. I see. And I do few and the dance skits, which are fun. I see. I see. When you play the guitar, you have what kinds of tunes? Some uh, modern tunes. Yeah, I I do a few tunes, but usually I like to play. Uh, I like to play a few country songs and other artists' songs too. I see that. That's really uh, really good to hear. We'll have to come for some of these performances to um, enjoy them. Uh, they and, and Barbara, I know I've seen Ben on stage uh, in that big uh, the Cape Cod Can performance that we talked about earlier. He participates in that, but didn't you just participate in something special recently it, here? Yeah, I, um, yeah, I did. Um, I participated in the uh, Christmas performance um, just last year, and okay. I played my guitar and sang a, I sang a, a good Christmas song, which was um, really tremendous. Excellent. And was there another show at the? Center that you participated in? Yeah, I, um, I did this uh, play um, from November to December. We did like 16 shows. The production play we did was um, Dr. Doolittle. Dr. Doolittle. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I think we have heard about that. That was quite successful. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah. It was a lot of fun and hard work, and I was like the, um, I was like the first policeman to play in the, uh, in the production play, and I also did like a circus act in, in, the, in Dr. Doolittle, and also played one of the uh, cronies, which were, which were pretty good. Wow! So you had you had multiple parts to. <laughs> yeah, I had, yeah, the other multiple parts were, yeah. were fun to do, and, and they weren't hard enough for me. That's great. So you're ready to do that all over again. Yeah, but um, it was a lot of fun in Doctor Doolittle. Yeah. What's your next show? Do you have a show coming up? Or you yeah, we. Set on something? I think we have another uh, <clears throat> Cape Cod Can show that's in April. Which is on the. Uh, which is a three-day week, uh, a three-day show from seven, April 17th till the 19th. Excellent. That's that's actually the show, Barbara, that I was mentioning earlier that uh, got me involved with the Katuit Center for the Arts. Oh, when uh, remember Rich Hurley, uh, he was the one that started the Cape Cod Can. Yeah. And he was at one of those shows that we went to, and he just happened to say, "We need some members to help out," and that's how we got involved. So now, how, how many years have you been involved with this? I think it's three, two or three? Two yeah. or three years, yeah. I can't remember. It was track of time. But yes, <laughs> yes. And Jim has, Jim has left uh, the Cape, actually. Um, he's moved to South um, and handed over um, the program. And the, throughout the Cape, there seems to be quite a need for programs like this. Yeah, you know, I think, I think as Ben would, would attest, right, this is something that he loves to do. And so uh, for those individuals that uh, either enjoy music like, like Ben does mm -hmm. or art like Nikki does, mm -hmm. to have those opportunities um, to go and to learn and to work with, with friends and colleagues. But then, you know, Ben bridged a, a gap by participating in the Dr. Doolittle. It was right, just a right, show at the right. Graduate Center for the Arts and he auditioned and participated yeah. and was right there with everybody else. And that's what's exciting for me as a, as a member of the, of the CAN Advisory Board is to see folks like Ben. We're very proud of you to be able to say, you enjoy what you're doing and you're gonna push the barrier and you're gonna participate right. wherever you can. And you've done a great job yeah. on that. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yes, yes. You're taking your guitar and you're singing to new, new places. Yeah, I, I like taking my guitar to new places to perform. Yes, great. Now the real question is, do you give lessons? Because Barbara and I were going to take a ukulele yes. class <laughs> in the last <laughs> segment. <laughs> well, I do like, uh, I do take guitar lessons usually, uh, um, just to practice other, <clears throat> just to learn other songs. I'd like to learn from mm -hmm. some from other different artists. Great. Well, Ben, thank you very much for being with us today, and I look forward to seeing you on the stage in April. My pleasure. And I'm yes. going to bring Barbara to the show as yes, well. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. We're here with Melissa Kenny, who was the executive director of Cape Cod Can, and uh, tell our viewers exactly what that stands for, Cape Cod Can. Cape Cod Can is Cape Cod Collaborative Arts Network, 
and we are in partnership with Katuit Center for the Arts. We're an independent arm of Katuit, and we provide visual and performing arts programs for people of all abilities. I see, I see. We have um, talked to some of the uh, young people who have participated in this, and apparently it's hugely successful to see people producing great art. Absolutely, producing great art, producing great shows. Um, we started an open mic night um, about a year and a half ago, just as a pilot, and just to give it a forum for folks to come and try whatever they want to try in a safe, um, supportive setting. It exploded, and I think because they learn from each other, they gain some confidence from one another, they're definitely each other's fans, and so now we have a monthly event where we had to move from our schoolhouse location to the art studio right. <laughs> for space. Right. You know, last Friday we had maybe 50 people come. That's a great success. Exactly. But I guess you have um, even a greater goal, and that is to see that uh, there's more inclusion. Absolutely. So while we do offer specialized programming, um, our programs are open to everybody, and we really encourage that because we want inclusion, not only within Cape Cod CAN programs, but throughout the arts community on the Cape. Um, so we want to make sure that all organizations are welcoming to individuals of all abilities, and our goal is to help inform and educate other groups too, to you know, kind of help them to know what they may need to put in place to make attendance successful. Yes, yes. So Melissa, we were actually mentioning earlier that uh, I view Cape, the, the center here, the Center for the Arts, not as a, a theater or a gallery, but as a community. Absolutely. Uh, and, and Cape Cod Can has very much become that. You're not cr just creating theater and art, but you're creating friendships, Absolutely. support networks. Uh -huh. um, and and we, we talked about on the show when, when all of the actors are up in the, yeah. uh, the balcony yeah. and they're working and supporting each other and getting ready to go down or congratulating folks that just came off the stage and yeah. you can see that sense of community with folks that might be from different communities and never would have met each other until they had the opportunity to come to one of the programs or come to the center here. Absolutely. Right. And you know, we work with fifteen plus agencies along the Cape. And so you have individuals that may, like you said, not see each other on yes. a regular basis. And so they were really only getting together when they did the big musical in the spring. And so that was another one of our goals through open mic night, through increasing our classes, to provide a forum for people to get together more frequently. Yes. And I think yes. that's happened. Yeah. Um, so yeah, relationships built for sure. Connections, connections mm -hmm. are everything. Right. And uh, those communities you speak of are, are diverse, they, uh, which represents what a real community looks like. Absolutely. It is, uh, it is diverse mm -hmm. with all kinds of people. Absolutely. And uh, art and talent is um, everywhere. Everybody has right. talent. Yes. It's yes. being able to explore and develop that talent and then having the opportunity to experiment and share it with the community and that's what we hope to right. do. Right. Yeah. And that example of uh, Ben who was just with us uh, yeah. auditioning along with two other uh, Cape Cod Can clients that um, were in the Dr. Doolittle show. Absolutely. Right here at the right. Katrina Center for the Arts and, right. and we walked through the, the studio today, the gallery with David and saw some of the art exhibits mm -hmm. and there are uh, juried pieces that mm -hmm. entered the show mm -hmm. from applicants from Cape Cod Canada. Right, right. I know. It's I amazing. Can see, yes. I can see that your involvement must be very gratifying for you. Yeah. Well, I don't get to do it every day like uh, <laughs> Melissa does. And, yes. And so that's a yes. very exciting uh, yes. a role yes. that, that Melissa has and mm -hmm. she's doing not only great work here, but she's been working with the organizations off Cape mm -hmm. and we're helping with transportation uh, <laughs> challenges to get folks to be able to participate exactly. in these programs. Exactly. Um, and so it's, it's a lot of work and, and Melissa's yeah. doing a great job at it. But we pre uh, really appreciate our community support because we're very, very small, we're part-time, you know, and, and we try to eke out as much as we can in a 20-hour work week. Yeah, yes, <laughs> um, yes. So it's essential to have the support yeah. of our community. Yes, that's good. Yeah. Now, how many organizations now about do we have involved with the network? So I would say about 15 here on the Cape. Um, we have morphed into Plymouth a little bit, so through grant funding through the United Way of Greater Plymouth, and at the request of DDS, we've um, moved our improv program there. We're going to be working with teens after school there. Some of the agencies have both Plymouth and Cape offices, so yeah. yeah. And so you see a pretty great need. I do, and, and I think because 
people don't know what they don't know. And so what I mean by that is um, they're not sure that they can attend classes anywhere, you know, that it's open to them that they would have the accommodations um, necessary to be successful. So, and you know, in addition to what we offer in terms of specialized and inclusive programs, we hope to, again, educate so that it opens up um, opportunities throughout, throughout the Cape. So absolutely there's a need, but there's a need because there's talent. Yes. yes. Right? And, right? And I think what's important too is that it's not just the art that's created and it's not just the performance, but it's those skills that are built mm -hmm through participation, so whether it's self-awareness, self-confidence, um, and just as an example, we had a young woman who shared that since taking improv classes, she, for the first time, led her ISP meeting, you know, yeah. which is her individual service plan. That's yeah. her, you know, goals for the year, where she was kind of just a participant. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, she had that confidence to say, I'm going to take the take lead. So skills are developed in the most natural kind of way. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And then with peer support, and it's not just the teachers. The teachers are amazing, but it's also having that peer support. Yes, yes. You know, whether they're peers who also may have um, developmental disabilities mm -hmm. or peers who don't have known disabilities. Right, right. You know, just having that is, is yes. incredible. Every, everyone needs this kind of Everybody needs and it. associating in order to grow. Right. To grow as a, a human being. And really, a testimony to it is two years ago, our spring show, we had about 60 individuals who participated through their organizations, but they were all on stage. Last year, we had 80. And for the first time, we decided to hold auditions because prior to that, we didn't have speaking roles so much, but we thought, you know what, let's give some speaking parts. It went through the roof. Really? Oh, that's great. And so we had 80 individuals, and this year we anticipate perhaps 100. Oh, that's extraordinary. That's right. wonderful. Right. And so Ben, who you spoke with, had a speaking role in our last show. Um, and so again, the confidence building. Yes. And the calls, you know, oh, I really want to have a speaking part from an individual that you never would have imagined because they appear so shy, but they've I been see. boosted. Oh. That is, it's, that's wonderful. It's amazing. Right? Yes. I know. I have the yeah. best job in the world. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> I yes, do. you have a lot of successes to build on. Yeah. Melissa, yeah. how do we connect viewers if they know someone, families that want to connect with Cape Cod Can, or if they Absolutely. would like to come to the April, April Music Review? Yes, please. And tickets are going to go quickly. We had our first yeah, sellout out. at Christmas for our holiday concert. 183 tickets were sold, which was wow. phenomenal. So, um, so they can call us at 508. 681-0239, or they can visit us at capecodcan.org, or reach out to us via email, and it's capecodcan at gmail.com. So, yep. One other thing I'd like to add is that because of the success of our program, we are now morphing into younger children. So we um, got involved with teens through our after-school program. We're with five high schools on the Cape doing after-school inclusive art clubs. Um, that has then kind of piqued the interest of families. What are you doing with kids? Mm -hmm. So we partnered with Barnstable Recreation, and we're going to be doing in the spring classes for grades three to five on Saturdays. And again, inclus inclusive classes. Um, and then we're going to start, uh, we're going to call it Bigs and Littles. So it's going to be kind of a parent, grandparent, and me um, toddler class here at the center starting in March. Oh, that sounds, it sounds wonderful. And that was all informed by the interest in the community. Right, right. And how wonderful for younger children to have opportunities I know. I can't like wait. <laughs> I yes. can't wait. It would be fun for you to work with them. And also for the parents, grandparents, guardians, because, you know, kind of an offshoot of having these classes is that maybe they can build a little supportive network themselves. Oh, right. You know, that's, that's not always easy, right, to have that peer support and maybe go out for coffee afterwards yes, or, yeah. you know, do something fun and kind of get to know one another. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Great. Melissa, thank you very much. Thank you. For thanks yeah. for the opportunity. Thanks for today and thanks for all the work you're doing. Yes, thank you so thanks. much. For thanks. Good work. Thank you. So, Barbara, we have our work cut out for us. We have to yes. take a ukulele uh, class. <laughs> we right. have to uh, Cape Cod Can uh, musical review show right. to go to in right. April. Right. Um, and we need to continue to spread right. the word of, of this program yes. and, um, and this resource that's right here right. Uh, in the Upper Cape. I'm also interested in that pottery class. 
Ah, yes. So, yeah, yeah it's going to be a busy season. Well, Barbara, I'm glad that we're able to uh, to get back on the road. I know yes. we took uh, some time. The viewers uh, <laughs> haven't seen our show in a while, but we're looking forward to uh, producing this show uh, on the first Friday of uh, every month so that we'll go back to our monthly schedule. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you because this stop at the Kutuit Center for the Arts has been just, uh, for me, an, an enlightenment. I have not, no idea that such good work is going on today. And I'm so impressed and so inspired by it all. Like just uh, such wonderful people doing such good work. Yes.